The sport of off-road racing is full of incredible stories, wild characters, legends, and even villains. We cover it all on offroadracer.com, but there's only so much we can put down in an article. Sometimes we have to dig a little deeper, and that means sitting down with some of our industry's most influential characters and hitting record. Welcome to the Off-Road Racer Podcast, a Mad Media production, made exclusively for offroadracer.com. Each month, we'll go beyond the dirt into the homes, shops, and lives of the most interesting and game-changing icons of our sport. You'll hear about their history, success, failure, and everything in between as we pull back the curtain and reveal the stories of their lives. I'm your host, Matt Martelli, and this is the Off-Road Racer Podcast. I'm Matt Martelli. This is the Off-Road Racer Podcast, and I'm here with my good friend, Dan Myers. What's up, Dan? Hi, Matt. How are you doing? I'm, I'm excellent. Glad to be back. We were, in, we were just in Moab. Uh, good good weather for the most part, but it wasn't this beautiful SoCal weather that we have today. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, I know the... Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't even. <laughs> what, so you guys, your family's been doing this for a long time. I mean, your was it your dad or your grandfather who started off road? Um, my dad started, so he got the. Um, it was yeah, it's been uh, forty six years. Back in nineteen seventy eight, he got the Toyota dealership down in Escondido, and he started. Uh, his partner was like, "Hey, there's this uh, little race called the uh, you know the Baja one thousand. Yeah. You know, I think we should try uh, try out, try uh, go race that. And um, yeah, he uh, they built a couple cars, and back then it was just like stock t- stock trucks with like roll cages and seat belts, and um, and I think he uh, he almost yeah they almost finished the race, and then after that they were hooked. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then he went to go on. He raced races like the Mint and. A lot of races. It yeah, it's a it's a funny thing. Like you know, we have all the historical photos from the mint, and I have one of I have, I have one of him. Like there's this famous hole where everybody's skying it out, right? And I'm looking at the truck, and I'm like, there, there's no suspension in that thing. It's oh yeah, it's like six inches of travel or something. Yeah, I mean, you no, know, he had it was a um, yeah the original trucks he had. Um, uh, they I think the the first ones were, they were actually built by uh, PPI. But they were 7S trucks. And yeah. And they had, like, just stock suspension, you know, Bilstein shocks, just the, you know, all it was it was stock. The trucks were stock. So it's it's a little bit easier now with racing the the trucks and everything we're racing. So Yeah, and, and then so then you guys, so your dad's racing. Then you guys had the shop in uh, Escondido, right? Um, well, I mean, he started racing. Then my older brother, Steve, he was racing for... A while he started out like racing class nine and then racing class 10. And then when I was, um, I think it was about 16, I uh, went, went in, went in a race with uh, Steve, road co pilot in uh, the Baja 500. And um, after that, I was like, uh, yeah, I was hooked after that. Yeah. I mean, what's that like? I mean, you're, so you said you're 16, your older brother's like, hey, let's go race the Baja 500. That had to have been pretty cool. Yeah, no, he was he was racing for a while, and like back then, the way to, um, you know, ride in the car was like you had to go help at the shop, you know, clean CVs, like you know, and and um, no, it, it was cool. It was it was it was a great experience. Um, you know, I've been going to the races. I mean, the first race we went to was, or the first race I went to when I was a little kid, I was, um, yeah, like I think it was six years old. It was like 1984, and it was the uh, mid 400. And um, I remember that year it rained really hard, so yeah, it's and that, my dad and my brother were racing that race. Nice, so, yeah, yeah. It's crazy when you have those memories, those childhood memories, and you 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 go back to those, and you're like, you can remember these things very clearly, and then other things are a little blurry. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's uh, yeah, some of the ra- yeah the races, there's yeah, some stuff's a little blurry, but um, you know. It's it's been our family thing. We've we've done the racing for you know years. It's been um, you know I've been brought up in it, and um, yeah, no, it's been it's been very uh, it's 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 a lot of fun. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I was uh, I was hanging out with the Negretti family, and they're intertwined with your family now, right? Yes, um, my uh, my niece 
And um, yeah, the Negretes, they, uh, um, yeah, we're going to have a, uh, I guess it's going to be, yeah, there's going to be a baby Negrete in the, in the, the Myers family. Nice. So, That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. The, uh, you know, the, the, it's, it's interesting because you guys are one of those families that have been doing it for, like you said, 40, how many years? Wait, it's been like 46 years. I think it was 79 was, yeah. It's, so it's, yeah, 45 years. Seven, and, 79 was my dad's first race. And so your, your, your son's racing? Yeah, my son's racing now. Yeah, so you're three generations deep. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. No, yeah, he started, uh, yeah, my son, Indy, he started uh, racing. Um, we got him a Class 10 car. Uh, we got, we started doing some racing with him with, uh, you know, go-karts and stuff first. And, um, you know, he was playing in mom's Can-Am for a while, and he was getting pretty fast in that. And I was thinking, you know, we need to get a, get a cage around ourselves. So we ended up getting a, um, it's a, it's the old Green Army full potential class ten car. Yeah, nice. And um, yeah, he started he started racing that when he was twelve and uh, racing the sports and races and got a couple first places and then we slowly moved him up to class ten and um, I mean it's it's been a blast it's been great to see, because it's a two C car I get to ride with him you know I get to coach him through the through everything and um it's been a it's been a fun time so well yeah what's that like for you you know obviously you know this is a shared passion between your dad and your brothers and now you get to share that passion with your son yeah it's um you know i, I mean I'm, I'm very blessed to be able to go do that uh you know he's he's an awesome driver we have we've had like you know we've had a lot of great times there's been um yeah, a lot of moments where it's like, oh no, what are, you know, what are we gonna do here? And you know, it's like, okay, no, 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 just go up, go around the car, get, you, you got him, you got him, you're clear. And um, yeah, it's, uh, um, yeah, no, it's it it's fun, and it's and I get to see him, uh, you know, grow as a driver and everything, and it, it's great. I and mean, you guys are one of the those families who you know definitely has a pretty massive legacy in off-road racing between all the different classes and family members but you you guys are pretty quiet you know like when you think of off-road racing it's like oh the mcmillans and you know the menzies and all this kind of stuff but it was funny because e even for me and i know you guys but I, there was kind of like a while ago there's this moment where the i'm talking to the negretti's and they're like oh and his cousin and his so and so and i'm like jesus like these guys have like an army of people that that race with them in in multiple generations you know what what do you think that is that that you know keeps you guys in this and doing this as a family ah uh, i mean it's well i mean it's always been a family thing with me it was just like um going to the races you know watching my dad race watching my brother race um it's just something i always grew up in and out in the desert and um, yeah, and you know, I'm, and then when it come, came time for you know me to race, and um, you know now you know now my son's racing. It's just yeah, I mean it's 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 just it's, you know instead of going on the family trips, we just go on the family race. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's for sure. That now you you've raced trophy truck quite a bit. What's mm -hmm. that experience been like? Do you prefer the trucks or do you prefer the class one cars? Um, well, so. You know, we just did the um, the well the Parker race, and, yeah. and uh, you know, Class One car won that. And I brought my Class One car out to go. You know, my Class One car has been sitting for a while, and it's an older. Uh, I mean, it's twenty year old Porter. Um, you know, like second generation Porter car, and um, I mean the buggies, they're fast. I mean, you can at, at Parker, you can you can beat the trucks, and and, and I. I personally like driving the buggies a lot because they're small they're nimble there's there's a horsepower to weight ratio where um you know the weight of the buggy with the amount of horsepower is that that ratio is equal or sometimes even more than like the uh like the trophy truck that has you know 1100 horsepower because it's still the trophy truck weighs over twice as much and it's um yeah it's i mean they're both different beasts but it's like i well, like when I went out to Parker and I ran the one car, um, we have like a, we had a 750 horsepower motor in the one car, and the car, you know, it's it's half the it's it's literally like half the weight of, of my trophy truck, 
and like in the sand washes, it's it's amazing how fast you know how how fast it'll go. I mean, because the car is like on rails when there's you know the berms and everything, and you can just really hold the speed more than a truck. Um, so, but yeah, I mean the, the truck's like a whole nother you know whole nother level too. Like running the trophy truck. And who built your truck? Uh, the one we have right now is uh, it's the one I have is a Brenthal truck. Nice. And it was. Uh, Jurgensen's uh, truck that he won the he won the he won the triple crown with that truck. Yep, yep. And it's I mean it's an awesome truck. Uh, the Brenthal program is um, you know it's top notch. They were yeah I mean they do all of our uh, you know pits for us. They do um, like basically it's it's an arrive and drive program. But I own the truck. Nice. So and so for you like. You know, you've raced, you know, all, everything in America, everything in Baja. What's your What's your favorite race? Uh, I mean, they're all, all the races are different. I mean, um, you know, Baja's. I mean, it it is the Wild West. It, there's, it's like an adventure every time you go down there. You just don't know what's going to happen, and you come back with like a million stories because it, it, you know it's down to Mexico and racing in like. The U.S., I mean, it's fun because you can have a race and it's a weekend and you're right back, you know, you're right back home. And that's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. It's, um, you know, racing both. Uh, yeah. I know right now I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing more of your races up in the States and uh, this year. And uh, hopefully next year we can have an all-wheel drive trophy truck and go, go back and play with the, the, and the trophy truck guys and score. Nice. Well, so when you're splitting duties, who's doing uh, the other dr- other parts of driving with you? Um, like last last year, because we had, or even the year before, I got another um, driver. I had uh, Luke Johnson. Yep. Um, he came in. So yeah, I guess it was uh, two years ago. He came in. I had him um, uh, start racing with me at the thousand, and he drove the finish of the thousand for me. But normally, I, I like I, I drive the whole race. Yeah, and um, and then yeah, Luke last year because the thousand was so long. Yeah, it was, it was a you know like sixteen hundred mile race. Yeah, um, yeah, him and I um, teamed up throughout the year, and you know we went to that race and everything. So and raced together. But like normally, I, I, I like to do it all myself. I've always been. I've Iron Man a lot of like uh, Baja One Thousands, um, like some of the long ones too, like two thousand six. Um, and I mean, it's fun to be able to, do, you know, do, do it all your, do it all yourself. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a hell of a challenge, but it's definitely rewarding. Yeah. You know, it, it's gotta be crazy though. Like with, with the 800 mile plus races and you're like, you're blowing bubbles towards the end there. Right. Oh yeah. When the sun comes up the next day and, uh, um, yeah, that's when it starts getting rough. You get you get over that you get over the twenty four hour mark, and it it gets tiring. I mean, yeah, but um, you have so much uh, adrenaline going, and um, it yeah, you just keep you keep you just keep going. So, now, is there any like you know? I know they're like with my brother, we we're pretty competitive with each other. Is there any rivalry within the family of like little like hey? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got you on that one. Yeah, there's always been, um, yeah, there's always, like with my brothers. I mean, we all, with my brothers, we all started racing like one 10 car together and we were like trading off and everything. And we basically had, like had an arm wrestle who was going to drive the next next leg of the race. And then, um, you know, we got 10 cars together and then we had one cars together. And, um, but uh, like during the races, I, Never had a race where I've like came up on one of my brothers and like tried to like nerf him or anything because there's always like so many miles and something happens. Like I, I pass them, you know, you, you pass each other sometimes. Like someone gets a flat and you go by them, but we we've never, you know, had that where we've like nerfed each other or anything like that. Yeah, that's funny. It's it's always interesting too. Like when you see all the different family members out there racing. Like, hey, are you gonna? 
are you going to let him go by you or like, well, how's this going to work? But uh, yeah, and it was, it was funny because I was trying to explain to somebody the other day that like, for the most part, we don't have the, the team orders like they do in F1 where they're like, okay, you're going to, this is the guy that's going to win. You're going to let him win. Right. That really doesn't fly much in our sport. Yeah. No, it's, um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's crazy out there. Yeah. It, 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 it doesn't, um, you know, there's so much luck involved with, with the racing. Like you have to have a perfect race. You have to have like no flats. You, you got to have no problems with the car. And then also too, there's got to be like no problems with you. You can't make any mistakes and you have to have such a perfect race to win. And even a guy like with a tool drive car or class one, or, you know, they can still overall a race. And you, you just never know. It's not like F1 and it's the, you know, the Ferrari car is faster than, than the other cars. It's, yeah. So. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So you're going to do an all-wheel drive. You already have one on order? Uh, not right now. I'm st- still been talking, you know, kind of throwing it around. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna keep my Brenthal, the, um, the two-wheel drive. I, I love that truck. Yeah. It, it runs great. It's, I mean, it's got 1,100 horsepower, big Danzio motor in it. It's... Uh, I mean the thing the thing buggies. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I mean, that's why we you know, up and up with us, that's why we separated the classes as we saw, you know, a need for the two wheel drive guys to battle it out and then, you know, um you know, the four wheel drive guys and but what's interesting is like mint perfect example, like no four wheel drive has won that race yet. Now after seeing the result at San Felipe of how hard Alan Ampudia drove that truck and that it lived, I, I, I have no doubt that a, a four wheel drive, especially a Mason, can overall the mint, but it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's ten of those trucks running San Felipe. Yeah, and um, yeah, now it's it's you know each one of those guys are sprinting as fast as you can go to try to make the you know the finish line and not have a problem. And yeah, Alan did an awesome job. I was watching that, and he, uh, um, I think it, it came together for him right at the end of the race too. He was right there when everything, uh, you know, and just you know made it to the finish. And well, and that's it. a rough race, and and I was really surprised at the average speed that that he was able to maintain. I mean, he he has a very. Um, w- I, it's not wild. He, it's you know, it's just a hard. He's driving the the vehicle very to its limit, right? Yeah. Um, and so I'm always like, when they won the thousand um, a couple of years ago, I was shocked that the vehicle lived because of how hard he was driving the vehicle. You know, but it just, I think it speaks to the evolution of of, of the equipment as you know. There was a decade ago or more there you could lose a transmission and change it and still win the race. Now that's yeah. not happening. No, it's not happening. Right. Now it's like down to like if you get a flat, you're probably out of it, you know? So it's it's pretty cool to see that evolution, you know, and like for you, I'm sure it's the same thing because of how long you've been doing this. You know, what so sixteen, how many years have you been doing this now? Thirty? Ah. Uh. Oh gosh, yeah. I guess it's been like thirty <laughs> years now. I'm getting old. You yeah, sorry about I that? I mean, yeah. When, I mean, when we, uh, yeah. No, next uh, next week's my birthday. Yeah, I'm forty six. So, um, yeah. No, it's it's crazy to see the evolution. Um, it from yeah, that's the Volkswagen stuff to yeah, it, it you know that like back in the eighties, like the thing was everyone had bus boxes with, and we were running a, a Toyota motor, like a four AG motor. And uh, in our ten car, and the transmissions were always breaking. So like the like the the hot thing to get was like a Hewlin transmission. So you know we had a Hewlin for a while, and then we went to a Fordan transmission. And it and I mean just yeah the and now it's like yeah you have to have a four wheel drive in some of these Baja races now to you know you, to win. And it's crazy to see yeah just from the the Volkswagen stuff the whole evolution up. It's been. Do you think that that you know going through or seeing the entire evolution gives you more, I guess, perspective on it? Um, a little bit. I mean, for for me coaching my son, and um, you know, I wish I had a. I, I 
I wish I had, like, I wish I knew as much as, like, when I first started racing, you know, with our, or with our family and everything, it's like, like everything was new. You know, there wasn't, there wasn't off the shelf parts. We had to always like, you know, build our own stuff or have someone build it. And, um, yeah, no, it's just, it's crazy now how you, you know, there's, you, you can just buy all the parts pretty much off the shelf and, you know, go build your own race car and everything. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Cause I, you know, now you see the equipment and whether it's, you know, UTVs being so capable and, yeah. or, you know, the, the unlimited trucks, you know, and, and they're, you know, the four wheel drive unlimited trucks that are being built. Like it's just bonkers, you know, and, and, you know, and the fact that like these builders now are making, they're carrying parts, right? Like that was the thing that, that didn't happen before you wanted an arm. Somebody had to fab you an oh, arm. Yeah. It was going to be three months or whatever. Right. Yeah. And now it's like, you know, guys like Mason, it's like, oh yeah, we have 10 of those sitting here. How many do you need? You know, it's pretty cool to see that. Yeah, no, they have, it, it's, it, it's evolved. Uh, yeah. I remember yeah, you were always waiting for stuff before. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it, everyone's like, they stock a lot of stuff. And at the race too, if you do break something, you can like, you know, go a couple pits down. Someone has that part, especially for a 10 car or something like that. So, yeah. Attention Off-Road Nation. The Unlimited Off-Road Racing Championship comes roaring through Parker, Vegas, and Barstow in 2024. It's three of the most prestigious and competitive off-road races in the sport. It all starts with the return of the Parker 400 in beautiful Arizona, January 10th through the 14th. Then it's the biggest, baddest, most grueling off-road race on the planet. The BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400 comes roaring back into Sin City, Las Vegas, March 6th through the 10th. And finally, the climactic conclusion of the Unlimited Off-Road Racing Championship. The California 300 returns to Barstow October 2nd through the 6th. Visit unlimitedoffroadracing.com for complete details. The 2024 Unlimited Off-Road Racing Championship is here. And so then, the now is your, has your son been riding with you at all? Uh, he's done a little bit of riding with me, but um, mainly I've been doing a lot of, you know, riding and coaching with him, so... We've done a lot of like family trips out to the desert, and you know, we'll, we'll take like the class one car or the trophy truck, and he'll in the class ten car, and he'll be driving one. I'll be driving the other one, and um, you know, playing follow the leader out there. So nice. What's your spot you like going to the most? Um, main pit out of Barstow is one of is one of our favorites. Also, um, Lucerne Valley out at um, Saudi Dry Lake Bed. Yeah. Yeah, those are both good spots. Barstow's a little rough for the yeah. beginners, but you know, they, there's still some really good trails and stuff out there. I've, I've discovered a lot more stuff out there as we've been doing the California 300. You know, because everybody does Barstow Maine, and they're like, "Oh, it's so rough," and that that part is rough. And then yeah. you get around there and you find some other stuff, and you're like, "Oh, there's a lot of good stuff here." Yeah, no, there's a lot of fun stuff out of Barstow. I love going. I mean, that's one of yeah, we, yeah, we we just go out there with the family. We take the cam at, can am out there, the one seventy, and just like yeah, and just cruise around with the kids and everything. So yeah, it's fun stuff out there. Nice, yeah. For you know, it's it's interesting because like you know, I was talking to somebody about this the other day of like having grown up in off road and see this evolution. Like I know it all, right? Like in, in terms of vehicles, like I know what the evolution is. But then you get these guys who come in and, you know, they're like, hey, day one UTV racer and the cars are accessible and the parts are there and they're built. Yeah. And I'm trying to explain to them like, man, this wasn't this way. Like you had to find people to build parts, you know, and wait for months and, you know, like really know what you were doing. Yeah. I mean, just, it, when I, you know, when I started racing, um, it's like it was the Baja 2000, that race we did. Um we just started to get GPS at the time. And that race, we did not use the GPS or anything. We just used all the all the notes that BFG had. They would give you like a big book of notes and have left and right turns and you know through the cross, you know, through water crossings or left through fence. And um, and you just have to sit there and do all the markers. Now it's like GPS and now now lead nav, which is like super awesome. I've been using that. Um, and now everyone's got the Starlink in their car. Right. So 
And, you know, you can sit there and text back and forth with the wife while you're driving. Yeah, he's driving good. We're doing good right now. And, um, yeah, technology and everything, it's it's changed so much. And it's probably going to be changing here really fast with Starlink and everything, too. Yeah, the Starlink systems now are really cool because not only can we push video through that, and com- now we can p- push communications uh, both ways. So, you know, I know I've been talking to Kevin Croyer and, uh, and uh, Ray from Dugan's, and now they'll be able to do on the fly uh, adjustments on the on the engines as well yeah. as the Fox guys are excited about being able to, you know, see real time data and make shock adjustments. Like it's it's going to be bonkers. Yeah, no, that's I, that's it's yeah, it's crazy because yeah, I mean, before you, there was you know you, you'd be lucky if you had a satellite phone that would work out in the middle of the desert. Yeah, and now it's like. Yeah, you can. There's yeah, so much technology with Starlink that's opened up with the race cars. It's gonna be it's gonna yeah. be crazy. Yeah, no, it's really cool because you know now we have an opposite problem, which was this year at the Mint. There were so many people that were giving us their feeds that I had to have a separate group or a separate truck that was taking the thirty or forty different feeds yeah. and watching them. And then we have our live stream truck that that's taking all the feeds from all the different cameras, and yep. that maxes out at a certain point, right? So then you have to like pre-sort the other feeds, which was pretty expensive to do, right? And then those guys are talking to these guys, going, "Okay, cool, we got something good. Go ahead and take it," right? Um, but but still, I'm I'm excited for the future of that because it, from a social media standpoint, it allows every race team to have a live feed from within their vehicle right yeah and then once you you know connect communications into that you can hear what's going on you can actually even communicate you know via that so you know i think that that's going to give us it's going to unlock more coverage of of you know our of our racing um you know and and reach more people so i'm really excited about that yeah i mean i i see someone taking it to like the next you know the the next Netflix special or something with uh, with off road racing. It's it's that's the one thing like off road racing didn't have before was the visibility because you know you're out in the desert. You didn't um, there just wasn't any there wasn't any news before. You, you remember the dusty times? Oh yeah, yeah. It's like that's who, that you'd have to wait like two weeks till dusty times come out to at find least out and you know to find out what place you got. Yeah, at least I remember reading them like a month later yeah. and then going and talking to the racers and going, "No way, did that happen?" Yeah, I didn't remember you know? that. Yeah, that's yeah, no. like a month ago, kid. You know, <laughs> so it's changed quite a bit, but yeah, it, it's pretty cool. So you you live, I think, up in Tustin, is that what you said? Yeah, I live up in uh, in Tustin. Yeah, and Tustin. so you're commuting back and forth to Toyota Escondido every every day for work. Yep, I'm the general manager at Toyota of Escondido. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been my family store. Uh, my dad got it, yeah, you know, back in yeah, 46 years ago. And, um, you know, I started working there in 2008. Yeah, I started out, like, as an express lube rider, like, selling oil changes and worked my way up to service manager. Um, well, yeah, I worked my way up to service manager, fixed operations director. And then we started... Um, I think it was around 2016. Uh, we started a, a shop called TE Motorsports, and that was um, uh, it, that was our aftermarket uh, accessory shop. Right. Because um, at the time, um, customers would buy they would buy a car, and, or they would buy like a brand new truck, and they would leave and go to four wheel parts, yeah, or off road <laughs> warehouse, and they go spend another ten grand there. Right. And we're like, okay, why don't we preload our own vehicles? Yeah. Like, why don't we preload them? The customer finances it in. It's already lifted. It's already got wheels and tires, exhaust, um, shocks, everything. And that was our business model. And we and we started doing that back in 2016. And I uh, ran that shop and got it up and going. And then um, was it? Uh, it was 20, 2019. Uh, our general manager was, um, he was retiring, and my dad asked me if, you know, if I would, you know, come in and general manager of the store, and I was, like, honored, and I went in there, and I've been running the store for the last uh, five years. Yeah. And it's it's been uh, it's been awesome. It's been my, my honor. 
Yeah, I mean, look, Toyota builds amazing products. You know, it's funny because uh, just this morning I was I was you know getting social media alerts about uh, the I think finally Toyota teased the sixth generation Forerunner, right? Yes. And so now everybody's freaking out about that, which is cool. Yeah. You know, I I think I've owned seven Tacomas, right? And you know, each one of them could be a commercial for Toyota, like because I've I've you know every single one of them has done at least three to five peninsula runs, right? Oh, yeah. Driven across the country, been to Moab, been, you know, all over the United States and and Baja. So they're they're really capable vehicles. Yeah, I mean the Toyota product's been is has been awesome. Um, yeah, when I was a service advisor, it all the time you'd see like Tacomas that would come in, Tundras, like Gen One, Gen Twos, three hundred, three hundred fifty thousand miles on them. Yeah, and still just running strong. And I. I've always had Toyotas, and it's one of those. Yeah, you're you're not left on the side of the road, and to, like Toyota stands behind their product. They're they're really big with everything. Yeah. So, yeah. One of the other things too that like you know I really like about what you guys have done with Toyota of Escondido is all the athletes that you've supported. You know, like f- lots of motocross guys. Yep. Uh, MMA fighters, yep. right? Like a good friend of mine, Dominic Cruz. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh, off-road athletes, et cetera. Yeah, we expanded, um, I think it was like 2003 or 2004, we, we started doing the um, Toyota Escondido Action Sports. Yeah. And we expanded into sponsoring, uh, it was first dirt bike riders. Yeah. And like Supercross riders. And we, yeah, in... We w- we went from that to doing like, yeah, doing M and M MMA fighters, the uh, surfers, um, regular boxers. Um, it's, but it's it's been great for it's uh, it's it's the action sports has brought a lot of a uh, lot of business to our uh, to our store and a lot of visibility that like other regular Toyota stores don't just hear about. I mean, you you've been the Supercross like when the riders oh, yeah. win, and they're up there. You know, they're up there on the podium. They're yeah. thanking Toyota Escondido Action Sports, and they're yeah. thanking for their truck. And we get them a nice truck and lifted, and you know, the, it's all TE Motorsports. You know, KMC wheels. Yeah, um, you guys have done some really nice builds. But what I think was cool about it is that there's always been this kind of disconnect, especially with Moto, where you know. The brands are focused on the moto products, yeah. And I'm like, hey, what do you think they're going to put that in? <laughs> right, yeah. it's a truck, right? You and then have you have a good truck. Yeah, you got to have a good truck, and then and then you got to have something that's you know pretty off road capable too, because most of those places you're going to, you know, free ride, you got to off road a little bit into them, you know, and then oh yeah, half the time you're camping out of your truck, etc. So now I thought that was really cool. It's funny because like you know we grew up in action sports and. There was, I remember there was, I think it was Huntington Beach Toyota was mm-hmm. doing some stuff like that back in the day. Yeah, but there, Yeah, there was a couple other dealers that have, they tried to like kind of do what we do. And, yeah. But. Um, yeah, not to the breadth that you guys have done. No, yeah. Yeah, no, and it, it's cool because then it becomes like almost like an institution thing, you know, that everybody knows the brand. And, uh, you know, for me. I support who supports me, right? So, like, you know, the fact that you guys support uh, action sports athletes, when I go to buy a truck or, you know, whatever, I'm like, okay, let's go to Toyota Escondido and support who supports us. Yeah, no. I I tell everyone, you give me a call, I'll get you guys a truck, get you guys a car, just let me know what you guys need. Yeah. Um, And, like, out the races and everything, you know, we support the races, and a lot of racers give us a call, and... Um, yeah, a lot of people just involved with the action sports, a lot of dirt bike riders yeah. that are even like out of state, give us calls and they come in, they want to get a truck from us because, you know, um, yeah, their, their favorite pro pro rider, you know, drives one of our trucks. Yeah. Well, and I think there's a lot to be said too of the packaging of like, you know, most guys don't want to have to chase around and get a part here and a part there and yeah. then find somebody to put it on and it's the wrong offset and you yeah. know all that kind of stuff you go to one place and go hey 
you know, do everything I need to be done to my my truck and know that, you know, it's going to uh, function correctly and, you know, not void the warranty or whatever. Oh, yeah. Like, that's a big deal. No, yeah, we make, that's one of the things we do make sure, like, that we have, um, that everything we do to the truck does not, like, vo- avoid the warranty. Yeah. Um, they can always bring it back to us. And, but, yeah, I mean, we have good products that uh, we, you know, good aftermarket products that we put on. And, we first started doing this toyota was like like corp like corporate toyota came down from japan and they were like looking at the trucks and they're trying to figure out why we were why like why are you guys lifting our truck like th- th- it was like an insult to them yeah and now they're trying like after a while they started talking to us and everything well now you can get like the new tundras that you can order a factory lift on the tundra yeah uh, but you still if you want big wheels and tires we can you know put the wheels and tires on but they're starting to step into the aftermarket world now too. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, uh, Toyota has such a massive legacy in off road with Ivan and the PPI oh, yeah. program. And I, we talk about this quite a bit. And you know, Ivan was just uh, our grand marshal at the Mint. Yeah, it was great uh, to see him there. Yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> I'm, dude. I mean, I'm. I don't fanboy out on many people, but <laughs> he's one of those guys yeah. that like he's my hero. You know, no. like. I remember being, you know, I was born in Michigan and I remember being a kid in Michigan and just seeing him on uh, Wide World of Sports and going like, okay, all these dudes must hang out in California and, you know, they all have cool hair and, you know, race trucks and hot chicks and stuff, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's that, it's really, you know, that legacy is pretty incredible. I hope that they, they, do more with it in the future but we'll see they have some pretty amazing products yeah they brought him back for some of the commercials got they painted up his uh uh one, one of the old uh first which truck it was uh one of the old ppi trucks and yeah brought him for the for the launch of the um uh, tacoma yeah they had him back out yeah and those are starting to hit the street the one that's linked in the back right um yeah yeah the the new um oh, trail hunter yes so the, yeah, the trail hunters are coming out, and the pros are coming out. We're, we got our first allocation for those. Nice. And are those moving pretty quickly? Uh, well, we haven't had one hit the ground yet, but all the other ones are. Yeah, it's they're they're pre sold or, um, yeah. And yeah, my friends are always like, "Hey, can you give me?" It's like, "Yeah, I can get you a deal on one." Yeah. So like, give me a little bit of time because they're they're coming in a little bit slow. They're still there's still that after COVID hangover. Yeah. With with all the auto industry, where. Uh, they're everyone's still trying to build up inventory so. it's interesting because i i got to uh, uh drive that truck a little bit at the um overland expo yep. right and i was like cool i wanted to can i i wanted to like drive away in it <laughs> like you know because they had us on like a little tight track where you really can't yeah you can't, do they much, can't get right you, you can't go too fast and i, and I <laughs> you know understanding the the you know, suspension technology, I'm like, oh, this thing, this thing can handle some shit. You know what I mean? Like, I want to go and take this through Barstow or Plaster City and, and really see what it can do. So I'm looking forward to that. But it seems like they're, they're paying attention to the market and, you know, starting to, you know, offer not a better product, just a, you know, a higher end product, because obviously the more suspension, you put into a vehicle, the more expensive it's going to be. Yeah. But I think, I think that's the interesting thing about the success of the Raptor and and now the TRX is that, you know, there pe- the the manufacturers are seeing the the market demand for it. That people want, you know, trucks that you know uh, are more capable. Yeah. No. Um. I mean, that's what uh, Toyota is going towards the market. Toyota has been always uh, conservative with uh, with everything. They they wanted everything to be reliable and dependable. And um, so, you know, they've always been a little bit more on the conservative side, but to see them build some of these pros and, and stuff now, it's, it's, uh, they're, they're very capable. Like the TRD Pro Tundra, I, I had one of those for a little bit. It's, it's a very capable truck. Yeah. I mean, they come with internal bypass shocks, yeah. like, right? Like, like yeah. It's, it's yeah, crazy. it's pretty badass. So. Now, you know, as you were coming up racing, you know, was there was there a racer that, you know, you saw that, you you know, influenced you the most or, you know, you saw as an idol? Um, I mean, I, I'd have to say Ivan was one of my, like, uh, 
Um, well, yeah, Ivan was one of my idols, but also, I mean, like my dad, because I mean, he would he would be racing the Mickey Thompson races, or, or yeah, the um, stadium races and everything too. He did some of those races, and he he would be out there winning them too at the same time. Like when Ivan was coming up, so that's got to be pretty cool. You're like, well. My dad beat Ivan Stewart no. today. No, I don't think he ever beat Ivan, but he did. He did win. A, he, they did win a couple of Mickey Thompson races when they were running the seven truck. Nice. So. Yeah, I know that it's cool. Like I said, it's like you know we have this vast photo archive from the Mint and now from Parker, and it's really cool to go through that and see you know the the names you know the and like I said I you know we saw this great photo of your dad going through I'll, I'll have to send it to you oh, i'd love to see you it, know yeah. and it's it's you know it's a seven truck you know it's a basic truck and it's just you know uh, it, he hits a hole and there's you know the the front's like four feet in the air yeah. you know it's like oh shit i don't they just send it back then i think they didn't know what they're doing no no <laughs> it's it's funny i look at some of the footage and i'm like i don't know how they didn't crash everywhere all the time right yeah but no that that's that's pretty cool my dad, he got to ride with me when um, uh, I built this. So we built a Jimco Class 1 car back in, oh, gosh, it was like 2003. Yep. And um, first race with it was Ba 500, and I put him in the uh, – I told him, like, okay, um, you know, you get to ride with me to the finish of the race. So he got in at, like, last 100 miles and went through Ojos and everything went to the – went to the finish with me and he was he would and he hadn't been in a race car in probably oh gosh like 15 16 years yeah and he was, he was like you guys have it way too easy <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I mean, he's always been watching them and yeah watch what he always comes out watches the races my mom comes out nice yeah lately we've been having them up in uh helicopter watching and that's been their yeah they're they're fun well that that so, is the best view of the oh, race yeah. I remember that one of the first races I I, I was shooting from a helicopter, and uh, man, after that I'm like I I don't want to watch the race on the ground because you, you yeah. can see everything, and just rad drama um, that goes down that you know you wouldn't otherwise see. You know, it's such a unique perspective. It's you know every year at the mint we um, we take up a handful of journalists with BFG and. Uh, give them that experience and it's always funny because they they come back into the vip tent and i could tell that they just got out of the helicopter because they're like yeah. you know they're they're like and i'm like you just got out of the helicopter and like <laughs> that was the craziest thing i've ever seen yeah. right so that's that's pretty cool yeah when we started doing trophy trucks down in baja um uh, we, we we had to get a helicopter because you're down in baja you need to have a medic up in the air Make and you, you just have to have you have to have a helicopter if you're going to run with the big boys. So, I think either the medic or the spotter couldn't make it. So my dad jumped in the helicopter, and then ever since then he was like, "Okay, I need my own helicopter." So then yeah. Yeah, my mom and him would go and fly and follow us around the race. And if like my brother broke, he'd be like, "Okay," and go over to like you know try to find me on the race course or find uh, his uh, nieces, so or yeah, his granddaughters. Yeah, that's really cool though. I mean, what a like what a cool thing for you guys to share as a family, you know? Yeah. No, it's it, it's been fun. I, yeah, my my mom loves going out to the races and yeah, they're they're getting up there, but they still always try to make it down, you know, try to make it out to the races and everything. And so what's your schedule going to be like for the rest of the year? What else are you racing? Oh, I'm just going to do right, right now I'm planning on doing the uh, California 300. Okay. And we're going to do that with um I'm gonna ride with my uh, ride with my son in the ten car, and my uh, my brother in law runs the nine car out there yeah, too. So he's which gonna... is a great story, <laughs> right? He he he, sh he basically showed up as a spectator, yeah, and he comes back as a racer, and then you know he tells Killian, my cousin who works with us, you know, uh, who's like my right hand. Um, like okay, thanks. Like I've my whole life has changed. I like, I quit my job and you know I'm I'm doing this racing <laughs> thing, right? Yeah, and no, he went he went all in. Um, yeah, we were it was around uh, yeah like a year ago. We just we got him out to some of the uh, got him out to some of the races and he started riding like with Indy. And yeah, and Jonathan was like um, uh, he's like oh I gotta get a car I gotta get a car and. 
uh, he saw how competitive like the class nines were out at like the battle at uh, Prim or yeah. the, or the um, Rage at the River. Rage at the River, yeah. Where there's like you know 25, 30 class nine cars, and that's such a blast. You know, yeah. It doesn't matter. I tell people this all the time. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, in a in a trophy truck or a limited truck or. You know, or if you're in a class one car or a class 11, like some, honestly, one of the funnest races I ever had was in um, Trophy Light. Yeah. And uh, I know what those vehicles can and can't do. And you're just laughing the whole time, having oh, a blast, yeah. you know, banging doors and, you know, just, just wheeling your ass off, right? And, uh, you know, that's the thing is it doesn't matter really what class you're in, you know, just get out there. And when you have, oh, yeah. you know, 10 plus people in your class, it's such a blast. Oh, it's fun. If, yeah. Being able to like go wheel to wheel and, um, yeah, him and that, like that nine car, he just got hooked on it. And yeah. we told him, yeah, we told him, yeah, we told him like, you know, nine cars, an entry level class, but it's very competitive. Yeah. And he, yeah, he got hooked and yeah, Jonathan, he's, uh. Yeah, he helps out on the race team and everything, and um, he's been helping me with the uh, with the races and getting stuff ready. And um, he, yeah, he he went all in on it. So <laughs> he get, he got addicted to racing real quick. It's easy to do. Yeah, it's easy to do. It's one. It's it's fun. It's it, it's an addicting sport, but it's it's healthy. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's it's going well. We're we're definitely stoked. Definitely stoked to have you racing with us. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time. This was yeah. great, man. No, this is great. Thank you for allowing me to come to, yeah, to your podcast. Yeah. Um, first time doing one of these. So yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks.